A Spokane activist for the homeless has a terminal illness. It is leaving him with only days left to live. We will show you how he is choosing to spend those final days and how the community is rallying around him. A decision is expected today on whether the Freeman High School shooting suspect will be tried as an adult. We will have a live report from the courthouse. And we will fill you in on what you need to know about President Trump, immigration, and the Mueller case. Five a.m. on our Tuesday morning. Well, we might be dealing with a very warm summer here in Spokane today. However, a cold front is making its way through Texas. People are being told to brace for a low temperature in the 60s. <laughs> They're saying bundle up this morning. It's being called Christmas in July. So dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think 60 sounds pretty good for us. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> Five a.m. now on our Tuesday morning. Welcome to Creme Two Morning News. I'm Jen York. And I'm Evan Narani. We, on the other hand, are uh, going to see some warm temperatures this afternoon, mm -hmm. warming up even more than we did yesterday. A lot of people didn't have much faith in me because yesterday around 9, 10, 11 a.m., we saw some showers mm -hmm. moving through, and everyone was like, ah, are you sure it's going to get to 90? And I was like, just wait, guys, just wait. 92 degrees yesterday. Trust the, the weather, man. I'm Evan sorry. I'm sorry. Doing. Once in a while, I kind of know what's going on. <laughs> uh, but what we got outside right now is clear skies. So we are expecting a pretty calm start to the morning and uh, moving into the afternoon. Continuation of those pretty dry conditions outside. But we're going to warm up very quickly. We're also seeing a cold front arrive in our neck of the woods. That'll be by this evening into tomorrow. What that cold front is going to do is it's going to produce some breezy winds. It's also going to pick up that convective activity. Activity, meaning thunderstorm activity could elevate into the afternoon. Ahead of all of this, a red flag warning that takes effect as of 6 p.m. It will continue through tomorrow, your Wednesday at 5 a.m. Due to that lightning, the gusty wind, all of that creating critical fire danger for pretty much everywhere across eastern Washington, moving into central Washington. Now, what we've got outside right now is already some pretty warm temperatures. 67 degrees in Spokane right now, 60 degrees in Coeur d'Alene, 66 in Ritzville, and 63 in Moses Lake. Our Already a 70 on there in Wenatchee at 70 degrees just at this five o'clock hour. Now, here's where we see those headed temperatures headed as we go on with the next couple hours. We're going to make our way to likely 80 degrees before 10 a.m., which is crazy. That means if you've got some dog walking to do, whatever you want to do outside, if it doesn't involve the pool, you probably want to do it prior to 8 or you know 9 a.m. Uh, as those temperatures really warm up. We're going to be in the 90s probably by about 1 p.m., continuing into 95 degrees by 4 p.m. Uh, our best bet for that weather to move in that could produce some showers or thunderstorms is going to come after about 6 p.m. So you can see by 6 p.m. that initial cloud comes in. Those wind gusts begin to pick up. We're at 9 mile an hour winds by 6 p.m. And just after that, into tonight and tomorrow morning, that's when we see a pretty solid chance of uh, some uh, thunderstorms developing. So we'll talk a little bit more. We'll lay out that feature tracker for you uh, coming up in just a bit, Jen. All right, Evan, thank you. 503 now. Today, a judge will decide if the Freeman High School shooting suspect will be tried as an adult. He is accused of opening fire in the school's hallway back in 2017. Crim 2's Nicole Hernandez is live at the courthouse this morning. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Jen. Yeah, so the judge is expected to make a decision today at 1.30 p.m. This trial has been going on for over a week, and yesterday both the defense and the prosecutors gave their closing arguments. Now, the suspect was 15 at the time of the shooting and will turn 18 later this year. He faces charges of first-degree premeditated murder with aggravating circumstances, three charges of attempted first-degree murder, and 51 second-degree assault charges for the other students endangered during the shooting. The prosecutor says this testimony from Freeman School District staff, investigators, and expert witnesses proved the defendant should be tried as an adult. In nearly all aspects, this crime could not, would not have been better planned by an adult. The defense argues that the suspect suffered brain damage due to lack of oxygen at birth, but the prosecutor's expert witness says there's no evidence of this. The defense believes he can be re rehabilitated. Now, according to the law, if the suspect is tried as an adult, he will be released at the age of 21 without any further supervision. Live at the courthouse, I'm Nicole Hernandez. I'll send it back to you guys. 
All right, Nicole, thank you. Just want to correct that. As a juvenile, he will be released at the age of 21 with post supervision. It is 504 now. Of course, we will continue to follow that story today. For updates, check the new CREM2 mobile app or visit CREM.com. Here are the top stories that you need to know before you start your day. Three fires in Okanagan County are now under control. The Sheriff's Department deputies there say they believe lightning sparked the fires. The fires were burning near Tenasket, Conconelli, and Okanagan. Department of Natural Resources crews were on the scene yesterday. The largest of the fires prompted level one evacuation orders. It started five miles northwest of Okanagan along Dry Coulee Road. DNR crews said this fire burned four to five acres. In south central Washington, a fire burning in Klickitat County is nearly out. The Juniper fire burned about 250 acres since Saturday, putting dozens of homes in danger. Last night, evacuation notices were lowered from level three to level one. Crews have lined the fire's perimeter and continue to mop up the interior. Firefighters say it was sparked by a wind turbine. An Idaho community stepped up to help a local business after a prankster ordered 25 pizzas and never picked them up. The order was for more than $400. At least three restaurants in Coeur d'Alene were pranked. Radici's restaurant posted about what happened on Facebook, trying to offload the pizzas for cheap. And it didn't take long for people to come to buy the food. The owner says a guy from a man from Chicago and Utah called and gave them a donation. He thinks they likely gained new customers because of this strange story. The Spokane City Council has approved a land swap with the local school district. Spokane Public Schools will build six new schools thanks to a bond passed in November. The city is giving the land to the school district to use for two of these new schools. The district will then give the city land to build a new library. A new J-turn on Highway 195 and Thorpe Road are opening today in Spokane. It is the first of its kind in eastern Washington. A J-turn is essentially a U-turn. This means drivers will briefly need to go in the opposite direction, but then they will be able to make a J-turn and merge into traffic in the direction they intend to go. The Washington Department of Transportation says this will cut down on serious crashes on Highway 195 because drivers will not need to cut across four lanes to turn left. New this morning, the United Kingdom has announced a new prime minister. Boris Johnson has won the race to lead Britain's governing Conservative Party. Johnson has vowed the UK will leave the European Union by October 31st with or without a Brexit deal. He will be installed as prime minister during a formal handover from Theresa May. Macy's has removed a line of plates from its stores after receiving criticism. Critics are accusing the retailer of fat shaming and casually promoting eating disorders. The plates featured a diagram ranking portion sizes as either skinny jeans, favorite jeans, or mom jeans. A correspondent on CBS's Innovation Nation brought widespread attention to the product on Sunday. She tweeted a photo of the plates asking, how she could get them banned in all 50 states. Macy's responded a few hours later on Twitter and said it agreed. They missed the mark on that product. It will be removed from all stores uh, at Macy's locations. In opposition to the criticism, one Twitter user tweeted at Macy's showing she was a fan of the plates and said she needed the plates now. Okay, so we want to know what you think. Should Macy's have pulled the portion plates from its stores? Let us know by heading to creme.com slash vote or click on the vote now tab on the new creme 2 mobile app. And looking at your results this morning, 100% of you say yes. That was a smart move. Coming up on 509 now, let's check in with Evan for one thing you need to know about the weather today. Jen, this afternoon we've got some of the warmest temperatures that we've seen so far this year. Upper 90s and a couple triple digits on the map. That means that today is a good day to remember uh, that that AC is running and uh, get that sunscreen with you, get that water with you. 95 degrees that afternoon high in Spokane and in Coeur d'Alene. Triple digits down towards south central Washington. So a hot day ahead with a cold front coming that will cool us down by tomorrow. Send things back to you. Evan, thank you. 509. Now, after 10 years of protesting and advocating, supporters of the Spokane homeless activist Alfredo Lamedo 
are adopting his message to carry to the rest of the community. As one who once lived on the streets, Lamedo said he knew his life's work was to help others who were going through similar experiences. He has led countless protests against the sit and lie ordinance in Spokane, but his health has forced him to say his final goodbye. He has a terminal liver illness and says he only has a few days left. You're going to send a message out to this community that we need help. I'm passing the baton to each and every one of you and your friends and get out there. The message is going out there and it's hitting receivers. Whether I see the receivers or not, it's hitting the receivers. Well, he is now in hospice care. He hopes others will continue his work of advocating for people experiencing homelessness in Spokane. 510, 510 now, time for in other news. Here are three stories worth knowing about today. A new study says teens and adults are more likely to try drugs for the first time during the summer. Researchers surveyed more than 400,000 people. Experts say that is when people have more time to go outside, including music festivals where recreational drug use is common. And apparently swearing can be good for you. That is according to a new study from the UK. Research showed cursing when you get hurt can actually help take away the pain or increase your pain tolerance. Participants that did not use offensive language seemed to feel more pain for a longer period of time. Apparently what you choose to eat for breakfast says a lot about your personality. A study from Sabra shows if you prefer to satisfy your sweet tooth in the AM, you are more likely to be an early riser, a dog lover, and a fan of romance, action, or comedy movies. Now, if you prefer more savory breakfast items, there is a higher chance you are a night owl, a cat person, and are a fan of sci-fi films and thrillers. You are also more likely to give lots of hugs. Evan, what, what is your go-to breakfast food? Um, I like eggs yeah? a lot, yeah, uh, but see well, the you thing are is, a cat person, that's savory, I, right? Well, that's true, <laughs> um, but I feel like on this shift, it's like, you know, oatmeal, kind of the mm -hmm. sweeter stuff. Like, we do whatever we need to do Jen to survive. Jen doesn't even eat breakfast. No. Jen's breakfast is coffee. So. <laughs> yes, it's so true. <laughs> and then fruit for lunch. Exactly, there we go. We'll have to see what that means. I don't know what that means. Someone out there, tell me. All right, 5-12 now on our Tuesday morning. Well, we are one year away from the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo in the next 15 minutes. What new events you can expect to see in the competition for the first time? And the Spokane City Council is making plans on where to put two new public schools. Coming up at 5.30, the latest on the new locations.